We are back with our asynchronous interview number four with Miss Jameson Keefover. And we are taking student questions. And but right before we get back into those questions, an important takeaway that I thought was stressed from uh, in Jameson's recent response was she was identifying the that that public misperception between what different mediums of mass communication mean to different people. Specifically, you said that uh, there was a miscommunication on a project between the language uh, some people use or affiliate with uh, studio work, say in the, in the broadcasting industry, versus the terminology and the language, the linguistic set that people use on a film on a film set, right? When when working on those types of projects, and that's not only an important distinction to make. I think it's just worth stressing, underlining a bit more. But it also brings to mind why we take the time in our communication, media, and ethics uh, major to emphasize the different mediums of mass communication. Because when we're studying communication, it's it's not just a single thing. Uh, just as we talk about. Uh, all, uh, uh, all mass communication occurs across various mediums, right? As we often refer to Marshall McLuhan, uh, sometimes his eye is uh, looming over us, right? From, from, the, from, the, from the archives, the medium is the message, right? <laughs> Meaning uh, we, we respond differently to different means and mediums of communication. So important uh, takeaway uh, that, that our speakers brought here Excellent stuff. Um, let's let's move right along and uh, engage some more student questions. Let's hear from Megan. All right. Hi, Jameson. My name is Megan, and my question for you is about software. What software has proven to be the most useful for you? And was that software something that you took a course for, uh, like learned through school, or was it self-taught? Thanks. All right. Good question. Software talk. So I, um, going into broadcasting, you're going to take kind of your more professional courses where you learn how to be on camera and things like that. And then you're also going to take courses where you learn editing, camera work, you know, audio, everything. And so I took a class over um, Final Cut Pro mm -hmm. 7. And um, I you know, we went through a book. He had a book. We did, you know, basic learning tools. He kind of walked us through it each time. Um, but then the next year, the entire department switched over to a Adobe suite. So I had to completely self teach myself Adobe suite. And that was pretty tough because it's, it's a different interface. It's a, it's different shortcuts. Um, you can end up changing your short shortcuts from Adobe to the shortcuts for um, Final Final Cut Pro, but I like Adobe a lot. You can do a lot with it. Um, it also depends on the cards you're using, um, but if you know, the more that you know about editing software, the better off you're going to be because it makes you less reliable on other people. Um, and you know, you can always Google. Like you can Google everything um, whenever it comes to software so if you're trying to do a keyframe or trying to do like a time lapse trying to do anything it's it's on Google and there's forums that have the answers and you just even YouTube has mm -hmm. videos um, and so you can you can self teach yourself um, but if you have someone there to kind of show you the ropes and the basics it that's that will just help you tremendously Excellent. So, um, you know, that software uh, comes in various forms, but when you're talking about Final Cut Pro, you're talking about video editing software, right? Yes. As opposed to, we've yes. dealt with in a, in a previous course, uh, or will, if you uh, haven't had it yet in the major, some Audacity software and other areas where we're experimenting with audio, mm -hmm. uh, audio cuts, garage and band. Uh, garage band being another we uh, refer students to mm -hmm. in that course. Um, but so, can you think of what are some of the challenges you might face with more of that audio slash video editing as opposed to a single form of communication like you yeah, know, Audacity? Yeah. Um, you, it's two separate things. You should always remember that audio and video, um, completely separate. 
um, whenever you get into the film world, if you know some of you want to go into film, um, there are editors, but then there's sound editors, mm -hmm. um, and so completely different jobs and. Um, <laughs> and Multiple, the jobs are multiplying people yes. so that's an important takeaway there's even you know a colorist whenever it comes to video mm -hmm. so you're putting if you're an editor you're putting the video together but then a colorist is coming back in taking that video and color correcting it um there's you know people doing cgi there's so many areas but um whenever it comes to audio it will help you tremendously if whenever you're recording the audio that you do it right versus mm -hmm. trying to go back and fix it. Something that you'll hear in studios or anywhere is we'll fix it in post. And that person that's your editor or your sound editor isn't on set to hear you say that. But if they were, they would tell you to fix it and do it right. Um, because audio is really important. And I've been on so many projects where the audio messed up. So you're having to cut something that you actually really like. Mm -hmm. But because that audio is not there, you're having to switch things around. Um, and if you're aware of maybe, you know, there's sounds that you can't control or, you know, trains, planes, all mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. If you're aware of that while you're editing um, and trying to, uh, but not while you're editing, before you're editing, then that's only going to help the editing process be smoother. And because editing takes a long time um, and that's something you have to remember, especially if you're trying to do projects on a deadline or something. Yeah, uh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Wink. Oh, we, uh, you were just now talking about um, the, the interference or noise, communication noise, that can get in the way of um, your ideal goals, particularly on a timeline. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have any advice or tricks for those experimenting with uh, low-scale video production how what should someone avoid when shooting outdoors for example do you have any expertise there or indoors uh, yeah. suggestions for uh, low-budget projects right yeah. so like would this be like on a cell phone or on just like a small camera it could be um, what's what would be the important thing we know between the, the two I guess you know or which could you speak to the best um so whenever it comes let's say you're recording on a camera um you're still going to get wind and that's both for um for a camera and a cell phone camera um you're going to get wind you're going to get you know background noises mm -hmm. and so something that you should either invest in or um be ready for is maybe like lav mics um investing in mics is always a good thing um because that will help your audio better if you're recording, you know, voices and stuff like that. Um, and that drowns out the sound of wind, that drowns out the sound of, you know, interferences. But, um, and then also lighting. Be aware of your lighting. Um, if, you know, this, if the sun is right above you, if, you know, it's, you know, um, one of those weird cloudy overcast days, then it's going to affect the color on your on your camera no matter mm. what. Mm -hmm. And so that's why whenever you see even effects on cameras now, you can change like the time of day settings if you're indoors, outdoors, the white balances. So be aware of those settings and you can self-teach yourself that too. You can get on YouTube, you can ask professors, um, you can you can learn the importance of those things because if you don't, then you're gonna be doing it in post. Oh, no, absolutely. So what I'm hearing then is the more you know up front, the more efficient you will be uh, as as a, an employee, as a young filmmaker, as a videographer, what what have you. Uh, great great insight. And let's let's take a question from let's take a question from Chris and see what uh, what Chris is going to ask us here. Hello, Miss People. My name is Chris Special. I'm currently a junior at Mid America Christian University. I have two questions for you today. With some of the information Dr. Casperi has shared with us, I've noticed you have a great deal of experience in media through internships. Could you give some insight to your hectic schedule and how have you balanced school, internships, and work? All right, so internships, something you have experience with, and then balance. I think yes. those are the two key themes from the, from the first part of Chris's question. Yes, so um, whenever it comes to internships, I've done paid internships, I've done unpaid internships, um, but I think it's just your own time management, what you have to figure out. Um, with my unpaid internship at um, More Monthly, 
I decided, you know, I live in Oklahoma City, this is a drive every time, I'm not getting paid, let's try to figure out what's going to be best with me. And that's, you have to remember that if they want you as an intern, they're going to work with your schedule. Mm -hmm. They understand you're mm -hmm. in school, they understand that you probably have, you know, a full-time job or a part-time part job, and uh, so they're, they're aware, and if they want you, then they're going to work around that, because they are there to help you in the end. Yeah. Um, and so with more monthly, I was only able to go two days a week, but whenever it came to um, my internship with my professor, it was you know four days a week sometimes. Sometimes it was three days a week. And so we worked with you know my week to week schedule with being a debater, working and, um, but ultimately you have to remember that you're there to get experience. And so if they have you working on a project, if they have you writing an article, editing a video, anything, remember that this isn't, it is for them in the moment, but it's for you long term mm -hmm. for you to show what you can do. So after that internship, you need to walk away with some type of documented proof of what you've done, whether it's the articles you've written, the press releases, the you know projects that you helped assist on, the you know, video editing, anything. And so um, whatever you physically take away um, in video communications and everything is really helpful because you can just say, here, look at, look at what I've done. So keep that in mind in the moment. And yeah. All right. Yes. Let's see. Uh, I think there's a little more to Chris's inquiry here. My second question is, what kind of reporting do you find the most fascinating? How does that cohere with your personality? Thank you. Oh, all right. Nice. So... Well, a reporting style is that? I, yeah, something you I have get, a preference for. Yeah. Um, so they, you'll have hard news. You'll have feature news. I'm more of that hard news person. I'm not really funny, and I'm not like mm -hmm. one of those spunky, extra yeah, spunky. Yeah. Um, Four a.m. <laughs> spunky. So um, you can always kind of get that person's vibe, I guess, whenever mm -hmm. you work with them. And I love political news, like I said before. Um, but I also have dived into documentary making, and um, my latest documentary isn't up on the internet yet, but um, it's about the Plaza District, and I found, <laughs> I found that I love community, um, you know, diversity, and I love community organizations that are building the community and the culture, mm -hmm. and um, for my, you know, senior debate, uh, piece that I did and performed was all about cultures and communities and sustainability, green tech that fuels cultures and communities. And that's something I'm really passionate about and I would love to continue to report on. And if you know, you're know you wanting to be a reporter at first, you're going to have to do anything and everything. Um, for you know student news, you can kind of pick and choose. Mm -hmm. um, but in the real world, I'm guessing you know if I end up working for a news organization, it's going to be what is happening then and what I have access to um, to make a good story but that's why whenever you see these national news correspondents they focus in one area and so they've just built up that one area enough to, that's what they mm -hmm. prefer and that's what they go for and so mine would probably be like community development in the way that that impacts different communities very interesting community development um finding your passion that's what i feel like i am hearing and we're gonna get into that uh, and provide some of those types of follow-up questions in a moment we're gonna take another quick break and be back with part three of our asynchronous video number four <laughs> 